Welcome to Electron Line. Our first application of the journal bearing is the gate. This gate here is attached to a bearing that rotates inside the housing here. And the friction between the bearing and the housing causes the bearing to roll up until it begins to slide. Once it begins to slide, we have the reaction force right here. And there's going to be an angle between the vertical and the point where the bearing touches the housing. And that angle here can be found by using the equation phi is equal to the arc tangent. And in this case, we're going to use oops, arc tangent. There we go. We're going to use the kinetic coefficient of friction 0 0.2. And let's go ahead and see what that's equal to. 0.2, take the arc tangent. That gives us an angle of 11.3 degrees. So phi equals 11.3 degrees. All right. Now, notice we have the gate itself, we have the counterweight, the gate has a weight of 200 newtons, the counterweight a weight of 500 newtons. You can see where the positions are of the center of gravities. And then, what we're trying to find here is we're trying to find the force required to get the gate to rotate upward. The counterweight usually is not sufficient to make the gate rotate, but at least it takes some of that weight off on the other side. It reduces the moment required to make everything rotate but we do have to overcome the friction as well. So what we're going to do here is we're going to sum up the moments about the center point right there, about the point of rotation. So the sum of all the moments about the rotation point, and of course that should equal zero. Well, we have the 200 Newton force acting in a clockwise direction, so that becomes minus 200 times the moment arm, which is 1.5 meters. And then we have the counterweight, which gives us a counterclockwise rotation plus 500 and the moment arm for that one will be 0 0.5. Next, we need to find the moment caused by the reaction force. And from the previous video we saw, and let's see here, that's going to be clockwise, so it's negative. We saw that that was going to be equal to the reaction force R times the radius of the axle times the sine of the angle phi. And we'll plug in in just a moment what that's all equal to. So that would be the moment caused by the friction force, which we found in the previous video. And finally, we have the force here applied to, in order to cause the gate to open up. And that will give us a counterclockwise torque that would be plus F times the moment arm or the radius of that, that would be R2, or 10 centimeters, which is 0 0.1 meter. All right, so what we're going to do now is simplify this a little bit, plug in what we have here. So zero equals, that would be minus 300 plus 250, and that would be minus the reaction force. Now what's the reaction force? The reaction force is equal to the weight, and the weight is going to be the sum of these two, so that would be 700 newtons, multiply times R1, R1 is 2 centimeters, 0 0.02 meters, and the sine of 11.3 degrees. And then plus 0 0.1 times F. Now we're ready to solve for F. Now we can move F to one side, everything else to the other side. So we have 0 0.1 F is equal to, we have a minus 300 and a plus 250, that's minus 50, move the other side becomes plus 50. And we have this, which is minus, move the other side becomes plus. So it'll be plus, that would be uh, 14 times the sine of 11.3 degrees. 700 times 0 0.02, that would be 1400 divided by, yep, that is correct. And so now we can say that the force required F to open up the gate it's 50 plus 14 times the sine of 11.3 degrees divided by 0 0.1. Now notice that 50 is really the force required to move the gate. If there was no friction, it's simply the difference in the weight of the counterbalance and the weight of the gate and, of course, the moment that they cause. The 14 times the sine of 11.3 degrees, that is the additional force required to overcome the friction. 
Of course, the 0 0.1 here is simply that the force is acting over a distance of 10 centimeters away from the point of rotation. Now we're ready to find the force required. So we have 50 plus 14 times 11.3, take the sign, equals, and divide by 0 0.1. And so the force required would be somewhere around 527 newtons. All right. So going back and reviewing a few things. First of all, we can see that we have the weight of the gate giving us a clockwise moment, the counterbalance giving us a counterclockwise moment. So this counterclockwise is a clockwise moment. The magnitude of the reaction force always equals the magnitude of the weight. And in this case, that will be the sum of these two that constitutes the weight of the gate. And the force here required to open up the gate has to act through a moment arm of 0.1 meters. See here. And I think that's it. That's basic things that we have to understand. And that's how we do a problem like this.